Lord, all members, please take their seats. All guests, please clear the aisle. machine to take the roll. President, we do have a quorum. All rise for the invocation to be delivered today by Representative Keeble, also leaders in the Pledge of Allegiance of the Flag. Representative Keeble. Heavenly Father, accept our thanks for this day and all of its blessings. We ask that you guide and direct all our thoughts and actions. Grant that each of us will feel our responsibility to our constituents, to our fellow legislators, to our community, and to our country. Bless our fellowship today and all the days as we seek to be better servants to your people. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Representative Keeble. Is there objection of approval of the journal the previous day is printed? Hearing none, so ordered. Next order of business communications, we do have one communication. Will the clerk please read? June 5th, 2013, please be informed, Representative Arthur Cavesi will be unable to attend session today. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. So the business committee reports, any committee reports? Chairman Mello, committee report. Committee reports. Next order of business, new business, any new business? Chairman Mello, new business. Any other new business? Next order of business is the calendar. When we go to Lena Mattiello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Item number seven, recommit, please. So ordered. Clerk will call the first item. Item number one, number 5402, sub A. Chairman Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a bill that comes to us from Representative Keeble. And this was introduced at the request of the uh, Dental Society here in the state of Rhode Island. It would, just get, it would make it clear, Mr. Speaker, that in the cases in which people have dental benefit plans and coverage, that it would disclose on the card whether, in fact, the person has duplicate coverage or not. Uh, what has happened is that there are some husbands who have dental coverage, wives who are covered under a separate plan, and in some cases, when they use up the benefit under the husband's plan and they go to, to get a supplemental benefit under the wife's plan, what they're finding out that is the, uh, the uh, benefit is not being covered. And since people are paying usually for this additional benefit of dental coverage, we wanted to make sure that they're aware of the fact whether, in fact, that benefit is going to be covered or not. So it will disclose on the dental card whether, in fact, it prohibits the use of duplicate coverage. I move passage. Chairman Kennedy moves passage of the act, seconded by Lita Mattiello, Whip Uchi, Representative Edwards, Representative Phillips, Representative Keeble, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Silva. It's been moved in, Representative San Bento. Moved and seconded. There are no lights. Clerk, please unlock the machine. Shall that prevail? All those in favor of green, all those opposed red. Clerk, please lock the machine. 69, the affirmative, zero, and the negative, the act prevails. Next item. Item two, number 5454, sub A. Chairman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a bill that comes to us from Representative Ucci, and this is a bill that has already been adopted by, I believe, 36 other states. And what it does, Mr. Mr. Speaker, would provide that neither the 
PUC nor the Division of Public Utilities and Carriers would have jurisdiction or authority over wireless providers. This is because of the fact that so many of the uh, things that take place with wireless carriers, because of the fact that they cross state lines and the fact that um, it's an ever-changing industry between the use of voice services as well as, as wireless Wi-Fi services and uh, in related things. Now we're into the 4G LTE. Um, these things happen at such a quick pace and they're looking to make as much of an investment in the state of Rhode Island as possible in order to bring about these new technologies. This would not apply in the case of, of an individual uh, who still requires wired service that comes right to the home. Those type of jurisdictional issues will continue to be under the PUC. I move passage. Chairman Kennedy moves passage of the act. Seconded by Representative Codia, Whip Yuchi, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Keeble. It's been moved and seconded. There are no lights. Clerk is unlocked the machine. Shall the act prevail? All those in favor of green. All those opposed red. Have all reps in their seats voted? No. Clerk, he's locked the machine. 64 in the firm, the 4 in the negative. The act prevails. Next item. Item 3, number 5425, sub A. Damon Handy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 5425, substitute A by Representative Serpa, uh, is legislation that we've been considering for some time, both in the House and the Senate. Uh, it basically uh, would require the Division of Planning to establish a task force to prepare a report based on current science that would address water resources and wetlands protection needs, on-site wastewater treatment system regulation, and watershed planning. Uh, the, the, the task force would report back to the legislature by December 31st of 2014 and recommend statewide standards in that area, Mr. Speaker. Um, it is a compromise that I think in the end gets, gets us to where we need to get to. Again, it's been something that's been worked on by environmental folks, by uh, legal cities and towns, by the business community, by the builders, and, uh, and a range of others. Um, and I move passage, Mr. Speaker. Chairman Handy moves passage of the act, seconded by Chairman McMurray, Lita Mattiello. It's moved and seconded. We do have a light rep howl on the bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to be recorded in the affirmative on number two, Mr. Speaker. Number two in the affirmative, so ordered. Thank you. There are no further lights. Clerk, please unlock the machine. Shall the act prevail? All those in favor vote green, all those opposed red. Clerk, please lock the machine. 64 in the affirmative, 7 in the negative. The act prevails. Next item. Item number 4, number 5619, sub A. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, 5619, sub A, comes uh, from yourself. This will provide a special license plate to benefit the home and hospice care of Rhode Island. Uh, it passed House Finance unanimously. I move passage. Chairman Mello moves past of the act, seconded by Lita Mattiello, Representative Codier, Representative Norton, Representative Hearn, Representative Ruggiero, Representative Valencia, Representative Amori, Chairman Marcello, Representative Costantino, Representative Malik, Representative Azanaro, Chairman McNamara, Representative Edwards, Representative Finn, Representative Johnson, Representative Blazewski, Representative Silva, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Bennett, any Representative San Bento. Any further second Representative Marshall as well seconding. Any further seconds? Been moved and seconded. We do have lights. Whip Trillo on the act. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> you know, I have spoken on every bill that we have had for a, a, license, a new license plate. You are consistent. You are. I'm consistent. And while this organization is a great organization, it's a super great organization. It's not about the organization. It's about the fact that now, 10, 12 years later, I can drive to the State House and honestly, I can't tell the Rhode Island cars anymore because we've put enough plates out there that you cannot any longer recognize 100% of the vehicles that are registered in the state. And I don't know how law enforcement is beginning to deal with this, but I think it's, it's just a terrible thing that we've done. There's no consistency in the design. There's nothing that lets them be identified as being Rhode Island vehicles, especially if you put a plate trim around them and you cover the word Rhode Island, as most of the vehicles do. 
So I'm going to vote against it. It has nothing to do with the organization. It certainly has nothing to do with the sponsor. <laughs> but I just, think we, I just think we continue down this path. Thank you. Thank you, Whip. Representative Lima on the act. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I be, uh, change my vote on number two? I wanted to vote green on that instead of red. Affirmative on number two. Change so ordered. Representative Guthrie. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I did want to second this, but I was busy looking at something in my desk. We'll and also, you. there are people in this room that it does affect. As a five-year cancer survivor, I think it's a great bill. Thank, Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Guthrie, and we'll order that you be added to the seconds on this. Representative Hull, on the act. Uh, on the act, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to put Joseph at ease. <laughs> In my career in law enforcement for the last 27 years, we, we are kept current on the changes in plates and the like. Rest assured, if a new one's out there, we'll know how to identify it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hall. Law enforcement's on the job. <laughs> there are no further lights. Click please unlike machine. Show the act All those in favor vote green. All those opposed red. <laughs> Clerk, please lock the machine. 71 the affirmative, 1 the negative, the act prevails. Next item. Item 5, number 5749. Chairman Mello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill comes to us from Representative Norton at the request of DCYF. It eliminates the requirements of the health facility to provide quarterly reports to the reporting of the suspect of child case abuses. The health facility would still require to report suspected cases just not on a quarterly basis. Pass the House unanimously, move passage. I mean, the Finance Committee, and so I move passage. Chairman Mellon's passage of the act. Signed by Representative Norton, Representative Cody, Representative Sam Bento, Representative Hearn, Representative Valencia, Representative Moray, Representative Ackerman, Representative O'Brien, Representative Messier, Rep Representative Ferry, Representative Azanaro, Representative Malik, Representative Shikachi, Representative Casey, Representative Abney, Representative Silva, Representative Phillips, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Bennett, Representative Hull, and Representative Giarusso. Any further seconds? Been moved and seconded. We do have a light. Representative Chippendale on the act. Yes, Speaker, I'm Proceed. sorry about that. Um, it would be if, if, the, um, if the chairman would yield, that would be fantastic. Will the chairman yield? He will yield. Proceed. I see that at uh, Chairman Mello. It was before um, finance, so obviously there are some uh, there, there's a financial implication to this. Um, <clears throat> being very sensitive to what DCYF does and the struggles that they have relative to staffing, uh, short staffing, um, and under resource uh, deal, dealing with a, a lack of resources. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering. Was there any testimony that would indicate to you that there might be a compromise in, in the con, uh, continuity of, of reporting and also the continuity of, of keeping in touch and con, contact with suspected uh, cases of neglect, abuse, etc.? Is there a concern there by anyone? Representative, that was a good question because there was no concern. What happens in this particular case, if there is a suspicion of child abuse, DCYF needs to send in the report. Then they also currently need to send in a quarterly report. So you're almost reporting it twice. Okay. So as long as, we, as long as the reports still get to go in on the occurrence basis, we felt that there was no need for them to have to report it quarterly as well. So we still, they still be generating the reports, but just not on a quarterly basis. They do it on each individual basis. And so the, the overall oversight of at-risk children will not be compromised? No, they will not. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further lights. Click, please, unlock the machine. Shall the act prevail? All those in favor of green? All those opposed, red. Click, please, lock the machine. 73 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. The act prevails. Next item. Item number six, number 5612, sub A. Chairman Gallison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. This bill comes to us rep from Representative Azanaro at the request of the Rhode Island National Guard. Uh, this would bring Rhode Island into uh, the International Emergency Management Assistance Compact. Uh, the National Guard is requesting this so that it would allow Rhode Island to send its Guard members out of state to assist other New England states and parts of Canada during times of emergency. And in reverse, if we needed uh, assistance from those other states in the compact, they would send us um, their uh, 
uh, assistance. The Committee on Veterans Affairs recommends passage, and I move passage. Chairman Gallison moves passage of the act, seconded by Representative Costa, Representative Giarusa, Representative Hull, Representative Bennett, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Abney, Representative Casey, Representative Finn, Representative Edwards, Representative Guthrie, Representative Johnston, Representative Blazewski, Representative Silva, Representative Ferry, Representative Messier, Representative Malik, Representative Diaz, Representative Azanar, Representative Falella, Representative Norton, Representative Cordia, Lita Mattiello, Representative Ruggiero, Representative Canario, Representative Amori, Representative Ackerman, Representative O'Grady, Representative Valencia, Representative O'Brien, Representative Marshall, Representative Almeida, Representative Costantino, Representative San Bento's hand is up. All seconding. Any further seconds? Moved and seconded. We do have a light. Representative Dickinson on the act. Uh, Mr. Speaker, would the sponsor yield to a question? The sponsor or the floor manager? Either one. Either one? Floor manager. The chairman looks like he's floor manager will yield. Proceed. Chairman Gallison. The question is, uh, does the State Department know about this? The State Department, the U.S. Department of State? Yes. Uh, I believe they do because this has been happening. It's been gone going with, uh, you saw in Hurricane Sandy, where there are other parts of the country that did go and provide services to um, uh, the people in New Jersey and people like that. So it's not, a, it's not a situation where we are doing anything against the U.S. Constitution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good question. Thank you, Representatives. There are no further lights. Shall the act prevail? Clerk, please unlock the machine. All those in favor, green. All those opposed, red. Clerk, please lock the machine. 73 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. The act prevails. Next item. Um, item number 85712. Chairman Gallison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. This act would make it easier for military service members and their spouses to obtain certifications and license to perform regulated professional services. It only deals with those licenses that are covered by DBR and DOH, and it's, uh, the National Guard is in favor of this bill as it would make it easier for those persons coming to Rhode Island on a short-term deployment uh, like the Naval War College to maintain a stable family environment by allowing their spouses to obtain a job in their chosen field while working on a, uh, to obtain a license. The Committee on Veterans Affairs recommends passage, and I move passage. Chairman Gallison moves passage of the act, seconded by Representative Kiba, Representative Cody, Representative Marshall, Representative Norton, Representative Falella, Representative Ruggiero, Lita Mattiello, Representative Malik, Representative Messier, Representative Ferry, Chairman McNamara, Representative Thin, Representative Chippendale, Representative Morgan, Representative Giarusa, Representative Costa, Representative McLaughlin.